Hey everybody, good Monday evening to you. It's Weather for Weather Geeks as we enter this final week of October. We had a beautiful weekend, we had a beautiful day today. We've got more nice weather coming our way Tuesday and then a few changes and at the end of this video we'll talk some more about what I'm looking at for this year's winter forecast, which will make its debut in about three weeks or so. What a turnaround it's been over the last few days. Of course, it was chilly, even wintry at times last week. We had accumulating snow in some places last Tuesday night and first thing Wednesday morning. But the pattern flipped at the very end of the week, and we were 15 degrees above average for daytime highs both yesterday and today. We had a big diurnal range today. 34 was the low this morning, 74 this afternoon, a 40 degree diurnal range. All right, it was a, a fantastic cloud free morning in midday. Then we started to notice some high clouds starting to build in as we headed towards sunset this evening. And these uh, high clouds will continue to obscure the sky a little bit at times tonight and into our Tuesday. And speaking of those sunsets, of course, they're getting earlier and earlier. Our sunset earlier this evening at 628 on Halloween, one week from now, 619 will be the sunset. And then on Sunday, November the 6th, of course, it's the return of Standard Time. And on the, the next day, on Monday the 7th, the sunset will be at 5.11 p.m. A week later, 5.04. Hello, darkness, my old friend. November. Early sunsets start setting in very early in the month. And it's just a sign that the seasons are rapidly changing, despite the fairly mild look to the forecast we have over the next week or two. The uh, system that's spilling the high clouds eastward tonight and will give us some rain by late tomorrow night wednesday morning that's across the midwest right now there's actually a severe weather aspect to this a threat tonight down in texas and then tomorrow the uh, threat for severe weather will shift a little farther to the east out across parts of mississippi alabama uh, western tennessee as well so from memphis to jackson to birmingham a uh, threat for a few uh, hail and wind producing storms even a low end tornado risk all right, so we're going to hit the lower 70s tomorrow. Will it be our last 70-degree day of the season? I wouldn't guarantee that just yet, considering how mild the pattern looks uh, during the first week of November. But if tomorrow were to be the last 70, you would actually be right on schedule pretty much. The 30-year average is October 25th for the last 70-degree temperature of the fall season. We had our last 70 last year on October 20th but it wasn't until November the 10th in 2020. There's quite a bit of variety, as you would expect. But the long-term average is about October the 25th. So tomorrow's a winter, despite the presence of kind of a milky-looking sky, not as cobalt blue as it was yesterday and into today. Timing of this uh, next rain event, we haven't had many of late, and we won't have many over the next week, but it'll be soggy at the start of the day Wednesday. So as you're heading off to work and school first thing Wednesday morning, it's going to be pretty gloomy outside, and it's going to be kind of a uh, a dark day overall with some sh uh, clouds around for much of the day. These will be fairly unproductive clouds once we lose that steady rain first thing in the morning. Maybe there's a passing shower through midday. Most of the time it's kind of cloudy and ho-hum. Then clouds will break for some sunshine on Thursday. As far as how much rain to expect late Tuesday night, first thing Wednesday morning mostly, uh, it's probably going to be under a half an inch. A uh, quarter of an inch to a half an inch does seem like a pretty good bet. We are you know, running a pretty decent uh, rainfall deficit for October and for meteorological fall. And actually, we're a few inches behind average for the year to date. So some rain would not necessarily be a bad thing, although, of course, the growing season is, for all intents and purposes, done in our part of the country. All right, we're going to keep rocking and rolling with this mild pattern as we head into November. Now, will we see a lot of 70s like yesterday and today? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but it does look, generally speaking, pretty mild through at least November 7th and perhaps even beyond that. I'm seeing some signs in the modeling that... Uh, generally speaking, the mild pattern might hold on through at least the 10th, if not into that second week of November. Speaking of the second week of November, actually into the third week of the month, November 17th, that's a Thursday. Uh, that'll be the debut of our annual winter forecast. I've really started to, uh, to work hard at this. There's a lot, a lot of hours that go into the uh, preparation for this forecast, both coming up with the forecast itself and then putting it to graphics um, and making it as easily digestible or digested as I can um, for not only, you know, the weather geeks out there and those who maybe are a little more weather savvy, um, but this also has to be digestible to the general public, um, those who aren't, you know, weather nerds per se. Uh, one of the things that I am uh, looking at pretty carefully is our list of what we call analog years, years in the past that had a reasonably similar 
kind of a pattern heading into the fall and into the early winter season as this year. Um, this is the list that I came up with a few years ago of our worst winters, both in terms of snow, the combination of snow and temperatures since the mid 70s. Um, and so we had, of course, some harsh winters in the mid and late 70s. But generally speaking, number one on my list here, uh, a little more recent, not, not from the 70s, but in 2010, 2011. And interestingly enough, this year, 2010, 2011, is showing up as a pretty good analog for this upcoming winter. Now, the rest of the top 10 here, not really an analog for this winter. It's pretty rare, and I talked about this some last week, it's pretty rare for us to have a harsh winter in a setup like we have this year where we have a La Nina, it's a, it's a weak to moderate La Nina, we have a lot of other things going on as far as the placement of warm and cool pools of water in the oceans. Um, it's pretty rare in that kind of setup to have a harsh winter. This was an outlier. Uh, this was kind of a weird outcome. 2010, 2011, given the setup, you would not have expected. Now, I wasn't doing winter forecasts back in 2010, 2011, but I would strongly suspect that a lot of meteorologists who were did not have a harsh winter in the forecast for our part of the country. But it happens sometimes. Sometimes the atmosphere just, you know, humbles us. Um, and you're going to have something like that happen occasionally. You can just make the best forecast you can based on the data available and hours of research. And experience and that sort of thing but sometimes you know you're just gonna be you're gonna miss and I suspect for a lot of people 2010 2011 was a miss I can tell you right now I'm not gonna predict a winter similar to 2010 2011 uh, this year but it is interesting that one of our top analogs appears to be that harsh winter um, and one of the things that I, I kind of stumbled across today when I was looking a little more carefully at that year uh, was the month preceding that winter November of 2010 this is what happened up here in November of 2010. It was chilly out west, pretty mild across the Midwest, a little bit on the cool side parts of the east. We were kind of somewhere in between. Uh, down here, this is uh, tonight's run of uh, what we call the Euro Weeklies, kind of the twice-weekly set of modeling. Every Monday and Thursday this comes out. Basically, it's a November temperature forecast. It catches the end of October and the first few days of December. But for all intents and purposes, it's kind of a November forecast. Kind of a similar map, really, to what happened in 2010. Now, this... Is not necessarily the answer key. This is just a model, um, but it, it does make sense to me, um, given what we expect to, to, to happen over the next few weeks. Pretty mild start to November. Second half of November should feature more frequent cold shots, maybe including the first one right around the middle of the month. Um, and, and the month might come out in the wash. It's pretty close to average for us, warmer than average off to our west. And yeah, the, the overall flavor of that map kind of looks similar to November 2010. Now, again, I'm not going to predict a winter like we had in 2010, 2011, in which we had 115 to 120 inches of snow, probably even more, up in the primary snow belt, and temperatures were 3.5 to 4 degrees cooler than average. You're not going to see me do that forecast. But will the fact that that happened that winter play a role somewhat into the formulation of our winter forecast? Yes, it's going to be something we look at and something we consider. But am I going to come out and say, hey, we're going to have 100 and 15 to 120 inches of snow this winter and harsh temperatures. No, uh, not given the uh, the things I'm looking at otherwise and the fact that that, that winter definitely was an outlier uh, given the uh, setup heading into that season. Anyway, long-winded way of saying, interesting thing to look at. Doesn't mean that that's going to be the forecast this year despite what uh, you know the Farmer's Almanac may have said, which they says the same thing every year. It basically says we're going to have 2010, 2011 every year. Cold and snowy, really snowy every year, but hey, that sells books. We're not here to sell books. We're not even here to get clicks. I appreciate all the clicks, but that's not why we do these forecasts. Integrity always. That's it for me tonight on Weather for Weather Geeks. Enough rambling from me. I'll see you back here on Tuesday.